So the next one, we move to um, Mrs. Regina Favomo from Lagos. Utilization of human resources, uh, human resource management tools from Lagos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ruben kept on referring to Ibumi. That Ibumi happens to be me. Um, starting on the well established protocols, we bring you good tidings from Lagos State. We'd like to share with you very quickly today utilization of human resource management tools, the Lagos State experience. I would like to quickly take us back to where we're coming from. Where are we really coming from? We're coming from um, the administrative cadre. And you all know, in the public service, that is like the elite cadre in service. That is the cadre originally that could rise up to become the permanent secretary. That's where we're coming from. We're also coming from the fact that that cadre was quite used to a lot of personal administration work that had to do with a lot of routine paperwork. And interestingly, for the change that, we, that is coming to service, it was clear that we had to begin to look at properly managing the human resource. If we're going to get to where Reuben is taking us to, we have to begin to manage people in a very technical manner. Also, considering that a couple of the functions of, him, of the admin cadre had actually been taken away. For example, the planning cadre, we now have a new cadre called planning, we have a new cadre, what does the officers? And it was quite clear that the people management part of our work as admin officers had to receive a sort of professionalization. So Spark worked with us clearly on that. For about four, five, six years, it was, it was, it was tough because you know that you know, changing people's mindset can be very, very difficult. But they worked with us. And eventually, in July 2015, we got an approval from His Excellency that we could implement professionalized human resource management in Lagos State Public Practice, in Lagos State Public Service. That was a landmark event. That was, it was changing. It, was, it had changed the way we were looking at things. So eventually, after the approval, that we could we approval to professionalize the implementation of HR in our public service. The admin cadre became known as the admin and human resource cadre. And what did we then? What happened? There was restructuring. It was restructured to five divisions, and I'll share that with us soon. But what we did, we first of all had to do, we had to sensitize everybody. We had to sensitize from the top level public servants down to the level six officers who were all in the administrative cadre. They had to be taken along. They had to, had to share with them what it meant to become admin and HR cadre. And then went to implementation. And also, we are beginning. To, the final step is that we're going to have a crew of public servants, talented public servants, who will be certified by the Chartered Institute of Personal Management, and they will be able to practice proper human resource management. That serves as a backdrop for what we're going to look at this afternoon. What happened? We now had a restructuring of the admin. So each agency or ministry, a circular went out that there must be five divisions which clearly looked at all the major um, functions, the subsets of human resource management. We have the workforce planning and recruitment, we have the learning and development, we have the employee relations and general administration, which we all know. So there was the threat that admin is going to be taken away. Admin is going to be taken away. There was still a division that could manage admin issues. And we know that this is also public service oriented because then there's some function that will not fall into other, any of these divisions, but that will still be in admin. And then we have human resource measures and accountability, where you have all the KPI issues and all. Interestingly, these are some of the tools that, working with SPAC, we are beginning to use in Lagos State Public Service. 
tools on record keeping, we're developing an HR database. What it has done is that it has devolved HR issues to ministries, to departments, to agencies. Because the truth is that you may not be able to manage effectively the human resource if you can't manage that person in the ministry, in that department, or in that agency. So the major shift is that it's empowering the MDAs to begin to build data around the people who work with them, to begin to manage their career, to begin to look at issues of succession planning, and some of, we have some of the tools to manage succession planning. Currently, that is being looked at at the at a very top level in Lagos State now. We have a draft ready for government. We also have a deployment policy that will assist in deployment such that deployment becomes structured in a manner that considers the talent, considers your experience, and considers your posting. We, look at, we have other tools like the um, training and development guidance, deployment tool, recruitment plan, performance management. We have reviewed our appraisal form and we're constantly reviewing it. We know where we are, where we're going to be, but we've left where we were. We look at structural interview guidance, Summary questions, exit interview. When people are leaving, why do they leave? Why are you leaving? What are the issues? So at the ministry level, there is more involvement in managing the human resource. We believe it's a major shift from where we're coming from, where everything resides, either at the office of the head of service or at the establishment. Ministries must begin to take ownership of people management issues. Very quickly, I'll now go to a particular tool. You can see Absence Tracker there, a tool. Absence Tracker. Um, before I go to that, I'll just quickly share with us some of the tools that we are beginning to use now. For example, job descriptions. You know that in public service, we have a schedule of duties. And schedule of duties, when you look at them, they don't dovetail really something on the work you do at your table. They are a bit generic. And so, MTAs were helped by, by staff involvement to begin to come up with job descriptions for people on the job. And also begin to look at what are the key indicators, what are the key performance indicators. Be you an admin officer, an engineer. So the admin department, as it were, the admin and HR, was being empowered First of all, to be able to write their own job descriptions and then begin to hand hold the other departments in the ministry of the agency to begin to come up with job descriptions and key performance indicators. Of course, we had to go the route of trying to build organograms who report Lagos State public service rules. There's a high dose of HR in the public service rules of Lagos State. And some of those things we have there include paternity leave for our men. Where you, oh yes, we have paternity leave now in Lagos. We have a 10 day period of paternity leave for the first two pregnancies of your wife. It's paternity leave, just two, just the first two. <laughs> and so, that's just one of those things that have been put there. But there's a lot of concentration of the human resource management in it. And this is an example of what a, a a job description looks like for somebody in HR. We have this in the learning and development, what we normally call training. But we know we won't move from training. Training has to, is about learning and development. And so you have, for example, a level 13 to 15 officer. That's the core purpose of his job. Those are his KPAs, key performance areas, and then they will dovetail in his key performance indicators. What this has done for us in the admin and HR is that there is a sense of there's a sense of your work, there's a sense of achievement also, there's a sense that you're impacting your ministry directly, not just waiting for someone to post somebody to you, but that you're actually impacting your department and your agencies. No, I'll quickly now dovetail into one very, very simple tool, which I know that starting from tomorrow. <laughs> You can all start to use it. And what is that tool? It is simply called, it was called Absence Tracker by Spark. But we kind of really called it 
time and attendance tracker. It's a very simple tool. It's very low in technology. Any phone, if you, everybody has a phone now, and on our phone of talk, that will be an Excel um, application on it. With that tool, the remotest part of Nigeria can use those two. Any of our outstations in Gongola, I mean, sorry, in Adamawa, in Yobe, in Dinawa, once your officer has a phone, he can track the, the attendance and punctuality of his team. How do you do that? It's very compatible, as I said. The technology is low. We don't need to go and buy biometrics and we know how costly everything is now. There are limited funds, shrinking budgets and all of that. But with a simple phone, you can use the tracker. It's a very low NHR tool and it can be deployed to manage time and attendance. Because the truth is, one of the things we say about us as public servants, we don't come to work on time, we don't come regularly and all of that. So if you're not at work, how do you deliver public service? You can't. So one way to monitor this is using this very, very simple tool called Time and Attendance Tracker. What does it do? It's a simple f format. When you are absent, one. When you are in before 9 a.m., zero. I mean, put a note. Arrival time has been determined. It will be we discussed all of that. And so for each time you are late beyond the accepted time, it will add up. It will add up. You know, we all agree that, okay, even let us track and all of that. By 9 a.m., you must be at your desk, whatever. So if you keep on accumulating time, after a while, we'll now add it up. If it's up to eight hours, when it becomes eight hours, that is the equivalent of what? One day. one day. So that's one day from your annual leave, it means you have spent part of your annual leave. Hello? to be punitive. It is just meant to be what? Corrective. And you know us, we don't like to play with our annual leave, do we? We keep it with as go, <laughs> nothing must touch it. So when you now, when it is threatened, you know that it will inform behavior. And so what did we find? The fact that it was, they will now say, ah, I don't want Taka to catch me. I don't want Taka to catch me. It became Taka is catching them. So people we'll endeavored endeavored to come to work much earlier than they used to. And we track this. We track this. That's a typical one. You can see the name of this tab, the days of the week, the arrival time, number of days after, total number of days, the grade level, leave days entitled, annual leave days, balance. So, as you keep on coming in, of course, after a while, you be cancelled if it's become repetitive. But the thing is that it was also, it informed behavior. It helped to tweak the behavior. And I think it's a very simple tool. You don't need any other thing, just your phone and the Excel application. Thank you, I'm wrapping up now. Um, could you please continue? Time and attendance, that's it. Before, no, no, please go back. Before the time and attendance was uh, implemented, after it was implemented. That shows, um, thank you very much. And very importantly, we have had a lot of high things of today, MTSS, strategy issues, and all of that. But it will happen, you know, very well, on a sustainable basis, if the people to do this work are not on duty. And if you don't manage them well, if you're not careful about their, their career progression, their LNG issues, and all of that, if it's not important, then you might have a problem implementing some of these are high strategies. And so we can see that important, very important, the workforce planning, the objectives of the civil public servants, the structure, the function, and all of them are important, and they are important um, linkages in our public service reforms. And again, it's all of the same circle. The people issue is central to, the, to achieving a lot of the reforms. Well, I think on that note, by and large, this also shows a holistic view of where the people agenda becomes very critical in terms of the whole holistic reforms. On that note, I think I have come to the end of this presentation, and I say thank you very much for your time.